talk about the pressure trends. So we have a couple going on with that pressure rising rapidly and pressure falling rapidly. If we have, uh, I've seen this on a METAR when a hurricane was approaching uh, or a thunderstorm or a large frontal system was approaching, you can see the pressure rising rapidly, pressure falling rapidly, okay? SLP, this is the sea level pressure sensor. So we need to know how to read this part, okay? So at this station, it's not reporting because the sea level pressure system is not operational right now. So that's what this part means. But what we might see as an example of how to read these is basically we want to get closest to 1,000 millibars, okay? If you think about a standard day, remember that's 10, 13.2 millibars pressure. So what they will do is they just, we drop the dot out and then basically add 9 or 10, okay? So the system is going to drop out the dot. We have to put it back in. If we see something like this, SLP109, all right, whatever gets me closest to 1,000. So I'm going to add a 10 in front. So I put a 10 right here and we get 10, 10.9, add that 9 back in. Similarly, here we have 987. So right in here, to get close to 1,000 millibars, I'm going to insert a 9 right here, which produces, and we add the dot back in right there, that produces 998.7. All right, next thing that we want to pay attention to um, is that dollar sign. And I don't think I mentioned this yet. So the dollar sign on the end means that the people who run the station are about to have to spend some dollars to get that station checked out because something is wrong about that station. It's, it's just a joke about dollar spending, but it's maybe a good way to remember it. Dollar sign means something's wrong with the system and we're going to have to get it looked into. Okay, another couple remarks that you might see from time to time, aircraft mishap. Hopefully we don't see that, but could be in the remarks. Uh, this one, S-N-I-N-C-R, that means that snow is increasing rapidly, and it will be followed by some numbers. So what if you see this S-N-I-N-C-R, it tells us with 3 slash 9 as one example, in the last hour, it snowed three inches and existing there's nine inches that are on the ground right now. So we're getting to have ready to have a snow day the next day. B-A-N-O-V-C, that's breaks in overcast. So if you see a, a layer of clouds, a nice thick layer, but then you have little breaks of blue sky that may be coded as breaks in overcast. Or they might just do that as overcast, depends on how they're feeling, but a human station may add this information breaks and overcast. They're going to provide hail information. So if we have hail happening, they're going to tell you a size two and a half inch hail. I am very worried about my car in the parking lot. Okay. And sometimes they just throw in other interesting remarks. So um, let's take a look at this one's from Canada, but that's, that's fine. Um, we have double rainbow. Interesting. Okay, we have broken clouds at 3,000 and they're towering cumulus. Cool, okay. Let's practice on the uh, sea level pressure right there, all right? So SLP 136, all right, what would get us closer to 1,000 millibars, nine or 10? Hopefully you said 10, because that would give us 10, 13.6 millibars. Close to standard pressure actually that day. Interestingly, also the temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, so we're really close to a standard day. CR altimeter, 2993. Cool. Very close to a standard day. I don't know the elevation of this airport, though, so it may not be at sea level. Okay, next part. All right, so um, the T group, this one that I've made red right here, this is the group you definitely need to know how to interpret. All right, this other P information group and the I information group, that's cool information. You might see that again. You definitely need to know how to read the T group. So we're going to get to that. Okay. The uh, P group we see here, we have the hourly precipitation. If we just drop, they drop the dot, but we put it back so that we can read it. And we get 0, 0 0.27 inches of rain has fallen. So here in this one, um, we do have light rain happening at this airport, but 
in the last hour, it must have just started raining because no precipitation has actually accumulated here. It makes sense because rain started, it looks like at 43 minutes past the hour. So rain must have started at 0143Z. Um, so it really hasn't been raining very long. We can see that. It's only been raining like, what, 13 minutes or something like that when they made them observation. Ice, if it starts with I. So again, we can get, um, basically it tells us in the last hour, one right there. Yeah, we have 0 0.03. We would add the point back in here. 0 0.03 has fallen in the last hour. Uh, this group it can also record three and six hour as can precip. If they change this to a three, they can report in the last three hour precipitation. All right, let's look at that last group, the one that I mentioned you really need to be able to read. Okay, I'm going to change my pen color. Uh, if we look at the main body of our, um, of our METAR, that really helps me to decode these, uh, especially as you're just starting. So um, for this example, I'm not going to have the main body to look at, but here we go. So essentially, this first number right here is going to tell us whether it's a positive or a negative temperature and dew point. If it says zero, then it's positive. If it's one, then it's negative. Okay. And again, what happens here is we have a three group, three number group where we have number, number, number. And they have dropped the dot out again, like the other ones. And then we have a dot that we have to put back here. So in this example, my temperature is 0 0.6 degrees Celsius. So I get my temperature from this T group in tenths of degree. And the dew point is negative 3.3 degrees Celsius. So the negative comes from the fact that we have a one here at the beginning of my dew point group. I will often look at the main body because in the main body here, if we have 0 0.6, that's going to be reported as 0, 1 because the main body just rounds, remember? And the dew point is minus 3.3. So I would have probably, it was going to say 0, 1 and M, 0, 3. And so that kind of tells me a reminder that that 1 for our dew point or the 1 if this was the temperature, then that's going to be our minus sign. Okay. Number codes, we can get the three or six hour precipitation. We also can get the pressure tendency with this five group. This is not even discussed in advisory circular 00-45H. So I'm not going to, you're not going to be tested on these areas. Um, if you'd like to know how to read them, this is a table. I am not going to spend time going over it here, but basically, you can use the code um, to base it. So five tells us it's a pressure code. And then we have this information. We have the code and then we have a different amount of pressure. So essentially we can look at the, the tendency with this group here. And then the last three numbers are going to tell us the amount of pressure change in tenths of a millibar. All right, if you see the dollar sign again, it means that there's something wrong and the system needs to be investigated. I would take anything that I'm getting off of a METAR with a dollar sign as this might be right, it might not be right. Something might be broken here. The no is not operating. Sometimes we see this on an international METAR and it's an international code, no SIG. They're gonna use this and it basically means no significant weather. So if you read it, you can, you can check this out. You might see this around. It just basically means there's not any significant weather that's happening to be knowing about. Quick text. This is a really cool service. Uh, a lot of people don't know about this. My phone. If I go ahead and text the following information, let me just do it right now and you can do along with me. 358782. Okay. If I text to this information, let's see, let's just type my home airport and I'm going to text it to GGG, M space KGGG, send that in, it will work. And there is my METAR for East Tex Regional Airport. Studying about METARs, you can do it, learn to decode them, and it will serve you very well.